As the Beatles once sang, they are the Eggmen, I am the Walrus. Sorry, that should have read, I get by with a little help from my friends. But when it comes to a boss fight, you're usually on your own, facing down a terrifying foe solo. Every now and then, however, you get your butt pulled out of the fire by a heroic NPC or non-player character, who more or less does the job all by themselves. Cheers, mate. Here then are the NPCs who won the boss fight for you, pretty much. Along the way, beware spoilers for the following, Goo Goo Gajube. Sorry, who's been messing with this? So, you think that little sword can save your master? <laughs> well, go ahead then. But make no mistake, Fido. When I'm finished with him, you're next. I was not designed to fear termination. Huh? Robotics has greatly advanced humanity, and they say that dog is man's best friend. But what if you combined the two? Well, luckily for you, exactly that happens in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Upon reaching warmongering big bad Senator Armstrong, Raiden's sword skills and sword quickly dispatch the giant mech he fights you in, but things get a little more difficult once the Senator steps out of his metal shell. Turns out the Senator has a little something up his sleeves, literally, as his body is teeming with nanomachines, son, that protect him from even the most stylish of robot ninjas. You can't hurt me, Jack! <laughs> what did I just say? Oof! Still, Raiden has come back from worse than this. Get ready for the fight back! Any minute now! Fortunately for Raiden, earlier in the game, he had the good sense to befriend Wolf, a robot dog who shows up before the Senator can deal Raiden the killing blow. Like all dogs, Wolf is clearly an expert at fetch, because he's brought Raiden something and it's a little more useful than a stick. A present from his previous owner, Raiden's buddy Sam. A duel to the death. May the best man win. Sam. Turns out, thanks to Raiden helping him out previously, Wolf's number one priority has gone from preserving his data to preserving your metal sculpted butt by getting that very important sword into your hands. Bad move, Senator. We're no experts, but we think that kicking a robot dog in the face is probably not going to poll well in the heartlands. And turns out the sword Wolf throws at you is helpfully the Senator's biggest weakness, kicking off Raiden's Ripper mode and making this a much fairer fight. Let's dance. And by fairer, we mean that you stab him right in his nanomachine protected gut before weakening them enough so that you can punch into his chest cavity, rip out his heart, and crush it. <laughs> Cheers, Wolf! Who's a good boy? You are! Yeah, you are! Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a hard game about samurai that no one can help you with, except the writers of fan-made wikis, and for a while a capuchin monkey called Bobo, who I trained to hit the deflect button with perfect timing, until animal services stepped in. But for the most part, Sekiro players will be very much on their lonesome, as they parry and slash their way through a mystical version of Sengoku-era Japan. So on the very, very rare occasion that the game offers you any kind of helping hand, a smart player says yes, especially when that helping hand could mean the difference between being sliced in half by the terrifying boss Juzu the Drunkard and, um, that not happening.
One such helping hand can be found in the form of heroic NPC Nogami Gensai, a noble warrior found in the game's Hirata estate, which is on fire and under attack, with the young lord you're sworn to protect having been snatched up by enemies. <laughs> Nagami is lying in wait near Juzu, presumably waiting for a partner with whom to attempt a stealthy, silent rescue of the young lord. Or not. Nagami's only flaw is that his Go Loud approach is likely to see him skewered by Juzu off screen, while you take care of the smaller enemies in the area. As such, your best bet is to quietly butcher all those regular-sized baddies until only Juzu is left, before getting the brave NPC Nogami to run in and help. <laughs> now fighting Juzu becomes much, much easier, mostly thanks to Nogami's amazing ability to draw his attention long enough for you to run in and go absolutely ham on his back like a hero. Not to mention keeping Juzu occupied while you step back and take a toot on your healing gourd. You've got this right, Nagami. With this amazing NPC doing basically all the heavy lifting, this boss battle is a cinch. The only downside is you definitely won't be prepared for the almost identical bosses found later in the game. Surely we can beat this guy solo, I mean, come on, look how little health he's got left. Oh, that's right, this game is a nightmare, and that's before you factor in that this chump has a troop of armed monkeys you'll need to kill first. Oh, Bobo sure hated that bit. God, I miss him. This is Brad. I'm running out of fuel. If there's anyone alive, contact me now or just give me a sign. I repeat, this is your last chance. When people ask us to choose our favourite Resident Evil hero, there are a few obvious choices. Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Brad Vickers, wait, what? Forgive our confusion, but for those unfamiliar with the series, Brad Vickers isn't exactly a Leon Kennedy level zombie fighter, due to his habit of running away from dangerous situations, earning him the nickname Chicken Heart amongst his fellow Stars team members. This is first seen in Resident Evil 1, when, at the sight of a bunch of zombie dogs, Brad flies off in the helicopter as fast as those rotors will carry him, stranding the rest of his teammates amongst the flesh-eating infected. Hey, Brad! Where the hell's he going? I mean, if you're going to choose the pilot with the nickname Chicken Heart, I don't know what you're expecting. He does somewhat redeem himself later, however, radioing in to offer rescue to the team he stranded, presumably after several hours of psyching himself up in a bathroom mirror. Brad? Brad! This is Brad. If you can't answer me, somehow give me a sign. But before you can get whisked off to safety from the roof, a tyrant bursts through from below, and it's your job to get as many bullets into it as possible, which seems like a pretty futile task considering how it doesn't even flinch at any of the shots. Fortunately for you, your hero Brad Vickers chucks down a rocket launcher. Jill, use it! Kill it, whatever it is! Which is the only thing preventing you from being smashed flat by the tyrant, winning the day. Way to go, Brad! Looks like Brad finally found his courage and will go into Resident Evil 3 as a proper STARS member, able to stand shoulder to shoulder with his heroic teammates. Or not. Jeez, Brad. <laughs> Mega Man isn't a man who you'd think would need much help fighting bosses on account of him being so, you know, mega. But au contraire, mon frere, because in 1993's Mega Man X, our blue-suited hero is not yet powerful enough even to deal any damage to the boss of the very first level, a mech-suited baddie whose name is Vile, although frankly, what did his parents expect with a name like that?
Lucky for Mega Man's limbs and bones, help arrives just in time. But unlucky for Mega Man's self-esteem, that help comes from his mate Zero, who is like Mega Man, but red, with cool spikes, Super Saiyan hair, and 8-bit hard rock starts playing whenever he shows up. Zero then tells you don't even worry about it, and that one day, if you work hard enough, you may even become as powerful as he is. Zero, you just know he's going to be nice about this to your face and then tell everyone he had to save you. So forgive us for feeling just a teensy bit smug later in the game, when we get our rematch with Vile and find that this time, he's managed to capture Zero in an electric cage. Or maybe we would feel smug, except yep, Vile still can't be beaten, with Mega Man's weapons bouncing off his regal purple armour like a particularly light rain. So embarrassing, wish Zero wasn't here to see this. Stupid, perfect Zero. True to his hero nature, the brave Zero has to pull your butt out the fire again, springing free from his cage somehow to deliver a devastating surprise attack. One that leaves Vile stripped of his armour and now beatable, even by the likes of you. After which, Zero dies from the injuries he sustained, making a clutch win that won the boss fight. On the plus side, at least we can control the narrative here. Wait, I remember it. Zero was very brave, but eventually gave in to cowardice and was shot in the back while fleeing. Also, I hear he pooped himself. <sighs> No. Close it. I, I'm trying! Close it! I don't really understand what I just saw back there, but it sure as hell looks like a shortcut to getting us killed. When it comes to characters you owe your life to, Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite is pretty high up on that list. After an awkward initial meeting in which she tries to kill you with books, you become friends. From then on, she's constantly aiding you by throwing you ammo and generally not being a game-long escort mission. She helps you uncover what the hell is happening in Colombia, but it's the boss fight at the end of the game where she really figures out how to save the day. Elizabeth realises that the code C-A-G-E actually refers to the musical notes that control the songbird, the huge robot bird that isn't too happy about you taking Elizabeth from her tower and has been after you the entire game, but does appreciate good music. <laughs> So, not only does she save you both from Robot Raptor Rage, but she helps you gain an ally in this Clockwork Custodian. Smart actions which are the only reason you are able to deal with the Vox Populi who are all trying to murder you at once. There, the Zeppelin. Then, when you lose the Whistler that helps you control the Songbird, who is it that protects you from a foul death but Elizabeth, now totally OP after the Songbird destroyed the Siphon Tower that trapped her for so many years. The Whistler! Elizabeth! The bird, Elizabeth! I lost control! He's coming! Where is he? Where is he? does she save you twice, but she also sacrifices her childhood companion to do so. What a nice lady. Okay, that's not so nice, Elizabeth. Zelda fans know that in most incarnations, Hyrule's princess is ready to get stuck in when it comes to defeating evil. Whether it's disguising herself as a ninja in Ocarina of Time to help Link in secret, or fighting Ganon for literally 100 years in Breath of the Wild while Link does... Does 
does that, I guess. But seldom is old Zelds more hands-on than in the final battle against Ganondorf in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. <laughs> In this game, the role of Zelda is performed by one Tetra, who turns out to be a descendant of the royal family. One who enters combat to help Link, presumably willing to do so because she was too unconscious to see Link nearly murder her by dropping his sword moments earlier. <laughs> oh! Butterfingers! While previous games have seen Zelda offer support from the sidelines, in Wind Waker it's impossible to win without her combat prowess, thanks to her ability to stun Ganondorf with light arrows, which gives you the vital opportunity to get involved with your sword. After a while, however, Ganondorf gets wise to the combat strategies of two small children and becomes completely impossible for either of you to attack. At which point, who has the bright idea that turns the tide of battle? Here's a clue, it ain't Link. Zelda's strategy of ricocheting arrows off Link's shield works a charm. And while Link might be the one to deal the killing blow, it's clear Tetra slash Zelda was the brains and a whole lot of the brawn behind this boss encounter. <sighs> At the end of which she and Link can go back to their quiet lives in which she is a pirate captain. Do they not have schools in Hyrule? What? Change it's huge! Come on! You know we've been through way worse than this thing! This is just the send-off our leader deserves! <laughs> If bodies are being found on TV antennas and there's a whole TV world full of shadow monsters, it's probably a sign that you should just switch to Netflix. But in the town of Inaba in Persona 4, it means that you, Narukami, and his band of friends have to solve a murder mystery and fight the entity known as Izanami, who is a pain in the butt. In the final stage of a tough boss battle, her true form of a many-armed nightmare skull face monster is revealed. And after a lengthy fight, she is clearly done with this. Goodbye. Accept the reality of your death. Cue the extremely final sounding Thousand Curses attack, but outside of your control your teammates each jump in one by one to save your protagonist behind, getting dragged into hell, we presume. Look out! Kanji! No! Don't worry guys, your sacrifice will not be in vain! Get up! We came so far! Or, okay, maybe, slightly, in vain. But before our hero is lost forever, he hears a voice in the mist. What are you doing? Turns out you've built up links with all the characters you met on your adventure, and they're all here to tell you how much you help them and how much they need you to get up and finish off that big monster, including your friends, family, and your team. No! Don't leave me! I'm scared! You and me both! Have you seen the size of that thing? <laughs> Anything for you, little Foxy! I'm <laughs> best friend! With renewed strength from all your loved ones, but mainly that fox, you are revived. Not only that, but your persona is transformed, and your bonds help you resist as an army's attacks before you finish her off, bringing back all of your friends and fading her out of existence. Well done. We did it! And it was all done by the power of friendship, something that we here at Outside Extra really believe in. Isn't that right, team? Ellen, I just gotta look at my car. It needs two coats of wax. Do it again, properly this time. We should get a fox. What was that? Nothing. Get my caramel macchiato! Is this almond milk? I said oat! 
So those are some of the NPCs who jumped in at the vital moment when it seemed that all was lost and just helped you out because it turns out they're just somehow just a little, little bit better than you. But hey, it's your name on the box, buddy, except in the case of Zelda. We'll gloss over that one. Can you think of any other NPCs who uh, jumped in and saved you or were just basically absolute legends in the middle of a boss fight? If so, pop them in the comments. And hey, if you want to watch some more videos, then up here is one from us, another one from us. It's about taverns that you would love to sink a pint in. Uh, and then down here from outside Xbox, once you've grabbed that frosty glass of lager or orange juice or whatever your tipple is, this one's all about uh, the weird ways that video games manage to justify their own mechanics. And if you like this, then subscribe. Bye!